This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. That's DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. Hold on to that. (laughs) Welcome back to the Shit Show 2.0. Okay, Boomer. Damn, Millennials. Wow. (laughs) Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. You want to be my wife? Oh, this is going to go downhill real quick. What is going on? And welcome to Take On The World with... Deb Doherty. And Mike D. Um, our professional, retired broadcaster is with us once again. Sad stand-in for John. <sighs> Poor Johnny. Uh, Overslept. Now, one of the reasons that Deb Doherty's here, because not six months ago or ten years ago, you... uh entered a deluxe edition podcast challenge and i'm waiting for my prize and it just culminated uh with their 100th episode that's right congratulations and um you won i did and i knew but i made her watch it anyway (laughs) because i'm evil i i'm a big fan of um scott yeah that dude knows his trivia. Yes, he I'll does. I'll tell you what. Oh, my God. Ray. Ray sucks. No, he doesn't. He sucks with trivia in, compar- no, come in comparison. Ray's awesome. He might be awesome, but his trivia is, sadly, whoever, whatever dude he was uh, standing in for got ripped. Well, <laughs> you know, they asked uh, Scott who, who they wanted, who he wanted. And he picked you, so you're lucky. <laughs> I'm well, of course. I picked you. I'm lucky. Um, uh, but Ray's great, so I'm sure he is. He just sucks at trivia. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Ray. Uh, so with that, we are waiting for her prize package to come. Can't wait, which is in the mail. We have a tracking number. I never win anything, that's why it's so exciting. So when that comes, we are going to do a, not live, we are going to tape an unboxing because uh, she has no idea what's in the prize pack because it was like 12 and a half years ago that this thing started. Back around Christmas, wasn't it? it, it it's, I think, five or six months, yeah. Is it that long? I think it is. Wow. I don't know. My my, my time clock doesn't work real good. <laughs> um, so with that, we are part of Deluxe Edition Network. Uh, that's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. And when you visit there, you want to do two things. Number one, you want to go to podcast of the month and you want to check out April's podcast of the month, which is Hilf, History I'd Like to Fuck, and Barrel Age Flicks. Uh, both I, of which you are fans of. I, I'm a big fan of both of them. Uh, History I'd Like to Fuck is Dawn Brody, a comedian. Uh, she also does this podcast and I, I got to tell you, like she digs deep for the facts, which I love uh, a lot of background information, which I love. Doesn't make it too complicated, which I have trouble with sometimes. Um, you like complicated. I, I like knowing every nook and cranny of stuff. So when John throws those questions at me that I can't answer, it really pisses me off that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think of looking into that. My 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 motto always was don't ask a question on air that you don't already know the answer to. <laughs> John asked me, but, but what about oh, that's just John. I'm like, motherfucker, I didn't look at that. <laughs> uh, and Barrel Age Flicks does movie reviews. Uh, it's a group of guys, obviously great friends. Uh, there's a lot of booze. There's a lot of ribbon and. There's a lot of information on movies. I, I tell you what, I watched this and well, I listened to it and it makes me want to watch that movie again because like everyone has a different take. Not everybody likes every movie, but even the ones that they don't particularly like, I'm like, I don't remember that part of the movie. And I want to go back and I watch the movie. In fact, I watched um, <sighs> Repo. 
a genetic opera. It, be, because they did that on the show, I watched that, and I had never seen it. And it wasn't a good movie, <laughs> but I was entertained, and there was a lot of stuff going on in it that I did like. So It wasn't Velocipaster, though. No, no, it was no Velocipaster. Which totally sucked, which maybe they should think about doing. <laughs> yeah, I actually... <laughs> Worst movie ever. Thanks, John. <laughs> Not the worst movie ever. One of the. Absolutely one of the worst Although movies. John did proffer to me one of the three movies I consider the worst movie ever while we were in Saipan. I'm not shocked. Uh, he said, oh, let's watch The Man Who Killed Ki Hitler, killed Bigfoot and Killed Hitler or something like that. And so like 15 minutes into it, he's sleeping. <laughs> and I can't start a movie without finishing it. Wait a minute. You were in Saipan? Oh, I don't know that I ever heard that story. Really? Are you sure? Because <laughs> I've been there twice. <laughs> um, I actually love that island. It's freaking awesome. Uh, and the other movie was uh, a tribute to my friend Rick. Uh, when we were youngsters, uh, on the weekend, we used to go to Blockbuster Video, and we'd grab a couple harm. He would grab one harm movie, I'd grab one, and he'd grab Basket Case. And I know there's people who love that movie. I just despise that movie. And Rick did too. And I, I've razzed him for probably 30 years <laughs> about least. that movie being the worst movie I ever saw. And as soon as I saw uh, the man who killed Big, Bigfoot and Hitler, uh, I texted Rick and I'm like, you're off the hook, dude. Someone <laughs> picked a worse movie than you. <laughs> Of course, then there's your friend Rob, who used to uh, tape movies for us to watch. And the end was always, that was back in the day of videotaping. Yeah, when you had to videotape them off of TV. Yeah, because he had cable and we did not. And So he would tape a movie, get to the end of the tape, and the movie would cut off. We'd never see the end of it. The end there's of several it. movies that I haven't seen the end of. <laughs> anyway, check them out. Hilf, History I Like the Fuck, and uh, Barrel, Barrel Age Flicks. Flicks. Uh, deluxe edition network. That's the first thing you do when you go there. The second thing you do when you go there, you click on the Denny's and uh, the Denny's every podcast in the deluxe edition network uh, put forward a topic and then there's podcast of the year. So you, you scroll past everybody else. Just pretend they're not even there. Go to take on the world, click on that and vote for us. That's it. You know, not Catherine Knight and not, <laughs> Well, and then you go through the list. Every podcast put up a, a topic and take on the world's topic was the most gruesome murderer in history. And there's so many. It was hard to pick five. But uh, the last podcast we just did was on Catherine Knight. Uh, we already did uh, Richard Ramirez. Uh, John and I did that some time ago, and he was pretty fucked up. Uh, I forget who else. Vin Vance Lee. Uh, I, I want to do a podcast on him yet. Um, and who was my other one? I forget. I thought Jack the Ripper was one. Yeah, Jack the Ripper's on there, but I, thought I don't want to do a Jack the Ripper podcast because everybody's done Jack the Ripper. Unless I find something that nobody else has said. Although I love the history of that and you know the london bridge which he is connected to him is actually in arizona is it it is in lake havasu city i, I did know that they brought the uh or the original london bridge was brought stone by stone over to arizona and it's in arizona so something else john and i do um we talk about what we're drinking. What are we drinking today? You don't know what it's called. It's cool. Terramana. Terramana. Reposado. Reposado. Tequila. Tequila, lime juice, and... I put tonic in it. Tonic. Uh, um, I... It's yummy. And I also, I went through one full podcast without drinking this. A little bottle of 12-year aged double cask Macallan. Uh, and I think that'll be my coup de gras at the end of this one 
And of course, your podcast today is sponsored. Oh, yeah. Our podcast is sponsored. And it's sponsored by Caldera Labs. Uh, Caldera Lab. So uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the podcast. But I want to put that out up front. We have uh, two sponsors right now. I, and I can attest that you have used both of these products and you really like both of these products yes i do uh the caldera labs like my skin is not as oil as it was before it's it's men's face care products we'll get into it later but my skin is softer it's not as oily as it was before i can wake up in the morning i don't feel like a grease ball um but pay attention to that later but now we are going to do uh, a topic. I watch and listen to YouTube videos like relentlessly because now I'm searching for research on, on different things. Which we know you love. And I, f I listened to one on a duel between two people. And I'm like, oh, I think that would be an interesting topic. Do a little bit of history of dueling and do a little bit of what I would consider some of the most interesting duels. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, let's go. Um, so dueling goes back as far as 500 AD. Uh, the barbarians would begin, begin to spread out and conquer lands during the fall of the Roman Empire. So the barbarians, while they were barbarians, had a warrior code of behavior with them. Uh, laws and customs with them uh, would govern how they deal with disputes over property or criminal acts. Uh, the fights were sanctioned and governed by their leaders. Uh, the fights were known that the fights and duels were known as trial by combat. And you see that in a lot of cultures. Yes. Um, uh, one's guilt or innocence would depend on the winner or loser of these fights. And it was thought that if you were innocent, the power of God would look out for you. And you wouldn't lose it, the, the, the duel or fight, trial by combat. Mm -hmm. um, you skip ahead about five centuries later because that, that was pretty much how it went for uh, the next 500 years, uh, around 1000 AD, it became the age of the Knights, which I love. Um, the, they expanded the code of behavior to cover loyalty to the church, his master and his lady. Um, the, the King would also use single combat to resolve disputes. Uh, they became duels of chivalry, uh, and they covered they covered wider issues, uh, issues of integrity, whether a knight was loyal, whether if the knight was a liar, whether he was brave. Uh, honor was everything, and you had to display your loyalty and honor at all times. And that really continues even in American history. You see duels, uh, maybe not necessarily uh, by sword, but by there are some interesting Revolver. ones. Um, by, so I think I forgot to put that one on here, but we'll talk about it anyway when we get there. But um, the, the last duel of chivalry was also known as the first duel of honor. Uh, was fought over whether one man slept with his mother-in-law and whether the other man was a liar. So one dude said, you slept your mommy-in-law. And the other guy said, you're a fucking liar. And they had to duel over it. Well, that was that was the kind of the theme of a movie we were recently watched. Was the it duel. the last duel? Yeah, the last duel. Where the woman said she was raped. Yes. And the guy said, I was didn't it, rape her. She wanted it. And the husband. We, we talked about, because I was talking to John, because he was supposed to come up today. I was talking to John at work during the week about this, which is how this podcast came up. And someone else in the office said, you know, I really liked how that movie was put together. You saw his perspective you saw the other guy's perspective and you saw the lady's perspective and none of them matched up mm -mm. there were things that 
overlap, but you know, it, it just goes to the saying where uh, when two people are in an argument, somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Sure, absolutely. And it's about your perspective. Uh, each one of these in in that movie, each one of the perspectives, like led you to believe. Well, okay, I get that. I get that too. Yeah. Well, hold it. What the fuck is she saying? Like, I get that. So I, I, when he brought that up, I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's that's exactly how the movie went, and I and I knew it then, but uh, it, it's just a moment of clarity that perspective means everything. It does, and I think one thing that that we don't take into consideration besides perspective is attitudes of the time and what was or wasn't. I mean, you can't look at something like that with an attitude of how things are today because it wasn't today. No. I mean, it just wasn't. And well, you, you can never look to the past and apply today's standards to the past. You just no, can't do it. but we try to. A lot. And that's why you see... You see the world the way it is now. And that's why you see books banned or <sighs> statues being torn down or this or that because we try to look at history through today's perspective and you can't always do that. Um. So after the 16th century, duels became about bravery, not so much winning or losing. Really? Yes. Because nobody wants to lose a duel. Well, here's the thing. Okay. And School me. I I'll get to that, but I mean, it's in here, but, and we'll repeat it, but it was more about if I challenge you and you accept my challenge, are you man enough to come to the fight? Are you man enough to honor the code of the duel and do it properly? It didn't matter if you you proved that there was satisfaction in 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 that. Okay, you you have honor, you have courage. So if I die with honor, aces. Yes. Okay. Um. If. <laughs> If you <laughs> Johnny jumped ahead me. Sorry. If you it's, it, that Johnny does it all the time. It's the chair. It's the next line. If challenged and you showed up to the duel, there was no stain on your character for being wounded as long as you showed up, fought respecting the rules uh and honor, and you you had honor, courage, and valor. Your it all remained intact. It didn't matter if you lost one whatever most of the time it would take a wound of some sort whether it's a scratch with a rapier or you got shot in the shoulder or someone shot you in the toe yeah, not everybody died in these things no or they died later because of some sort of infection that said it uh dueling became the next big thing during the renaissance like it was it was in vogue to duel and thousands of noblemen died in these unsanctioned private and illegal duels. Kings died. But there were duels that were sanctioned by the government mm -hmm. and uh, were basically overseen by the king or the ruler or whoever in, in that area. And if he wasn't overseeing it, it was an illegal duel. No, and when you talk about um, the time of the knights, these were tournaments. They did this kind of stuff for fun. All well, the time. this is after that time. This is... Uh, like French Revolution era ish. Um, so if you didn't show up to the duel, you lost your honor. And in that time, it that that would mean you couldn't even own land. You couldn't buy bread. You were shunned. Other people were allowed to abuse you in ways that someone who was honorable would not. It would not be allowed. So if I walked up to someone who walked away from a duel and I punched him in the mouth, it'd be okay. So I kind of well, like to live You're back You're digging there. it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good sign. <laughs> That's just because you could hoof a broadsword. Uh, the code of honor and rules of doing, dueling included the correct way to respond to an insult, insult and how to remove the stain on a gentleman's honor. There is, and I have it here, and I'll pull it up, and we can look at some of the rules. Uh, but at this time, the insult 
that could lead one to a duel could be very trivial, like insulting the shape of someone's mustache. Well, I think of Shakespeare biting your thumb. I bite my thumb at you, sir. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Go away or I shall taunt you a second time. <laughs> Monty Python. I know. Okay. Uh, or you could just walk by someone and not say hello to them and they could take offense to that yeah. and call for a duel. Uh, public slurs, slurs on another man's fame or reputation or being called a coward. Uh, the greatest insult was an insult to a woman that would offend the man who was there to protect her. So uh, let me pull up these, these rules here. This is the code dulo. Uh, and in some circles, it's the Irish code dulo. Okay. Um, so if someone challenges you to, to a duel, the, the job of the second, so every duel had their participants in a second. Oh, I know, because I saw the new John Wick movie. <laughs> right. So the offense requires the first apology. So now this is written in all the oldie times, so bear with me. Uh, the retort may have been more offensive than the insult. Example, A tells B he's impertinent, etc. B re retorts that he lies. Yet, you lie, sir. Yet A must make the first apology. Because well, he, he gave, made the first insult. He gave the first offense. <clears throat> and then B may explain away the retort as a subsequent apology. Oh, that's just like when we argue. So uh, the, the the seconds come in, they, 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 they get together, they, they decide the rules of the, the duel. We're, this is where we're going to be. This is the weapons we're going to use. This is how many paces or blah, 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 blah. Um, so now rule one is... Never talk about what happens at Fight Club. Yeah. He asked for an apology. And he says, no, you're, you're the son of a motherless goat. And uh, then each one of them get to fire if it's, if it's duels with pistol. And then if both parties would rather fight on than accept those apologies, uh, after two shots, B may explain first and A apologize afterwards. Um, now, I didn't look through all these, so I'm kind of browsing over them as we're talking. Um, but let me see how many rules there are. There are 25 rules to dueling. So in the end, if the seconds have a disagreement during a duel, <laughs> they have a duel. <laughs> so it was a double duel. Well, it sounds like they had a lot of time on their hands. Um, see if there's anything here but it's all about each step do you apologize no i do not bang and there's not satisfaction until there's blood or someone's dead easy peasy so uh some of the like that's kind of the history of dueling let me get into some of the famous duels. Because you really put some research into these. And yeah, I was researching and I actually think I rushed my research onto this one, but there's still nine pages. <laughs> so what's uh what what did you find? What are some of the famous duels? Uh this actress La Mopin. La Mumpin. I don't know. The she's an actress. She was known to be a badass. Uh, she had fought and beaten men in many fights. Uh, and we actually had a conversation about this with our daughter this morning. Yeah. She was um, a lesbian. And so it, well, caused, she was bisexual. it caused a lot of problems yeah. for her in the day. Uh, it did when she was at court. When she wasn't at court, it wasn't an issue. 
she could sleep with whoever she ride the cock carousel or yeah but it did cause problems because that's why she got in some of these fights well yeah the the final one the, the, the actual the actual duel that i'm talking about was caused by that okay so, tell so me about it. she she beat up this dude he insulted her uh she was i guess at the theater he insulted her and when he left the theater she was in the street ready for him with her her sword out and uh she whooped his ass and the next day he went back to the theater because he worked there and he was explaining to everybody what happened why he was all lumped up so he was sweeping up so he said oh i, I was jumped by these uh three dudes and they had hammers and bats and and that that's why i'm all bruised well she heard him and she called him out as a liar and then pulled the, his pocket watch out of her pocket and said, look, I took this from you when I kicked your ass. Hmm. And basically made him apologize in front of everybody for lying and then made him beg on his knees to get his belongings back. Badass bitch. So, like, that's her background. She, no bullshit. So uh, she was at the Royal Ball at the Palace of Louis. Louis? the 14th uh she was attending as a guest of louis's brother prince philippe, philippe of france uh so she showed up dressed as a man in a scarlet tunic uh she immediately when she got there started dancing with all the beautiful women like i'm gonna dance with you bitch i'm gonna dance with you bitch i'm gonna dance with you and uh like they allowed that like the aristocrats allowed that to okay let her do her thing. Whatever. She's an actress. She's kind of famous. So, but then she had the audacity to tongue kiss a particularly fine woman looking blonde Marquise right in front of the entire Royal family. Well, these three noblemen said that can't go on challenge. Like someone's got to say something. So these three noblemen stepped up to her and said, uh, you need to start acting like a lady and stop rubbing up on all the hot babes. Right. row. And she said, well, you know what? If you don't like it, let's take it outside. So they went outside. And now the original story that I heard is they thought she they thought she was still a man. Oh, okay. But in the research, like it was obvious she was a woman. She was dancing with women. She kissed a woman. They got offended. So uh they, she had three consecutive duels with these guys killed them all and she returned to the party while all three were lying in the street bleeding like dogs <laughs> now it did cause some problems for her oh, i'm sure it did um she had to leave she went to austria or germany for some time and didn't return to france for a minute uh and I guess eventually it was looked over. She, she uh, never got charged with anything, but like that was like, she's a badass bitch. Well, again, and you have to look at it through the eyes of history and um, there probably weren't a whole lot of women like that. <laughs> you said puffing wasn't allowed not. during the podcast. Hang on. This episode is sponsored by calderalab.com. These guys do men's skincare products. Now, you might think I'm just this beautiful naturally, and, you know, it takes a little work sometimes. I've been using this for about a week. I get up every day. I start with the Caldera Clean Slate, lather, rub it into my face, rinse, dry, and then I apply a small amount of the base layer to my face and neck. And then every night I clean my face again. With the uh, clean slate, I rinse and dry, and I rejuvenate with the good. It's a three-part system. It keeps my skin nice and soft. I I have oily skin, so I need to keep it clean all the time. Normally, I wake up, and my face is all oily and greasy. And, you know, in this week I've been using it, it's not. It's it's, it's nice. It's still nice and clean, and I'm, I'm loving this stuff. Uh, if you go to their website... It's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B dot com. You use T-O-T-W and you get 20% off your order. Frankly, if anybody knows me, I wouldn't say good stuff about something that I don't like. I, I love this stuff. Keeps my face nice and soft. 
Beautiful. I even use it on my beautiful bald head. So go and check it out. This stuff is sustainably sourced. It's all natural and a 60 day money back guarantee. You can't go wrong. Check it out. And we're back. Uh, <clears throat> the next duel we're going to talk about is considered the emancipation duel. Oh, and that's why we're going to Liechtenstein. Yes. Okay. School me. So in 1892, and I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't either. Because it could be a W. It could be Wadus. Wadus? Could be, I hope it's not Wadush. It's the capital of Liechtenstein. We should know that. The, you should have looked that up. Right. Well, I did find out that Liechtenstein is one of only two countries in the entire world that's completely landlocked by two other countries. And it's only like 65 miles. It's just 65 square miles. But uh, that's bigger than St. Croix. Yes. Liechtenstein is... Uh, Between Switzerland and Austria. Right. That's not what I was going to say, though. Hmm. Oh, the size of uh, Washington, D.C. Yep. So the duel occurred when the newspapers... The, the duel occurred. To, wow, what the fuck did I write there? The newspapers of the day um, declared it dubbed unique. the duel unique. Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, the duel was between the wife and of, of Australian ambassador of Paris, Princess Paulina Mer Metternich, and Countess Anastasia. Kilmanzeg. <laughs> Why would you put this in between Paris Prince, a Paris princess, and a contessa? Yes. Uh, she was the wife of the Duke Stathalter, which is basically a duke or, duke or count of Lower Austria. Uh, the emancipation duel was the first duel where the duelist, the second, and the presiding judge were all women. The only men present were servants who were ordered to stand some distance away and turn their backs to the action to prevent them from watching. And why is this? Why is that? Mike? One must ask. Which is the reason why you chose this duel. Of course it is. <laughs> because, you know, it would have given plenty of fodder for John. Well, th there was actually more than one duel that did it this way, but there were men at the other duel, which who had to turn their back. Gentlemen had okay. to turn their back. Uh, the reason for this straight, strange order, it was said, was because the duel between Princess and Countess uh, were to strip to the waist during and, the duel. And when you first told me about this, I was like, why? Do, why? Why? But there was a reason. For right. The, the reason was that the judge was Baroness Lobzinska. Lubinska. Lubinska, uh insisted because if someone got cut and there was a dirty piece of clothing in the wound, it would get an infection. Well, it makes perfect and, sense. And back then, an infection would kill you. Absolutely. And most people probably died later due to infection than they did from the duel. Right. So a lot, like a lot, uh, with a lot of things, the, the reason for the duel was a little muddy. There, uh, one reason put forward was they, they were on a committee for some kind of ball or gala together. Uh, they didn't get along. Um, the princess wanted everything just so, and the countess was more free with her ideas. Uh, so there was a disagreement about the flower arrangements for the event. The other was that there was a disagreement about what kind of bread should be served at the event. Now, I could give a shit about what flowers are there, but bread? Yeah, we could go down over bread. They had to have Padora's <laughs> Italian bread or we're fighting. <laughs> and, and anyone who's ever worked in an office with women know that that is totally possible to happen. Yeah. Uh, so either way, the ladies could not agree. Uh, and it so incensed the princess that she challenged the countess to a duel. Which... <laughs> Like, I challenge you to a duel. Hmm. Uh, they, along with their seconds and the president of the fight, who was a judge, 
she she happened to the judge was happened to be a medical doctor. Yeah. They left the capital, or they left for the capital to settle the matter. Uh, the fight was over very quickly. According to supposed eyewitness account, uh, there were a few parries. Uh, the princess cut the countess's nose, an action that shocked her so that in stereotypical female gesture, and this is what was written in papers. Oh, okay. She threw her hands up to both cheeks, the princess, and the countess pierced her forearm. Uh, but wait. There's more. There's more. Uh, the princess disputes the entire story saying it was only sensationalist Italian press making up most of the story. It's possible. So a countess and a princess get in a titty fight. It sounds like the start of a bad joke. It's not real. But it the 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 fact is is no one knows if it actually happened. So it's the most famous duel that may or may not have happened? Yes. But there are other duels that we know for sure happened. Yes. Uh, and we're coming to America for the next one. And this one, everybody knows. Yeah. Because there was a Broadway play. Uh, Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton, July 11th, 1804. It's probably one of the most famous American duels. But this duel had deep repercussions on the political landscape in the United States. For sure. Um, Aaron Burr was the third vice president of the United States. Uh, when the duel happened, he was still currently vice president. Mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't know. I knew he had been a vice president, but I, ha I thought this happened afterwards. I didn't realize he was still the vice president. Can you imagine if we solved our problems that way now? <laughs> well, yeah. They say politics is so nasty now, but oh, it was horrible back then. It was. It really was. If you, if you, you know, if you research history. So now Alexander Hamilton was the first and at that time former Secretary of Treasury, which I don't like Alexander Hamilton because Whiskey Rebellion. Oh. <laughs> See the link below. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, the two were longtime political rivals. Uh, Hamilton came to this detest Burr, uh, whom he regarded as a dangerous opportunist and spoke ill of him constantly. And, and that was very common. Yes. In that time. Now, there's more to the story than I found because I, I watched a video on this one. And uh Hamilton really went after him. He did. He did. So when Burr joined uh, And they used the press. Oh, I mean, yeah. we think about that as a modern thing, but it's not. Um, they've always used the press. And like a lot of times politics. when they use the press, they use pseudonyms for their writers. Sometimes. Uh family members. Mm -hmm. Uh actually I think Alexander Hamilton one of the letters he wrote to the press was in a woman's name. May have been. Uh, when that was that, where was that Lincoln? Or Jefferson? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, when, when Burr joined Thomas Jefferson uh, on the Democrat Republican ticket, which was the forerunner to the Democrat Party, as vice president in 1796 election. Hamilton launched a series of public attacks against Burr, stating, I feel it is a religious duty to oppose his career. So uh, things were done a little bit different back then. And the first vote getter would be president. The second vote getter would be vice president. Yeah. Um, so because of the, the attacks of Hamilton, John Adams won the pres presidency, presidency, 
and in 1797, Burr left the Senate and returned to the New York Assembly, even though he was from Weehawken, New Jersey. You don't talk politics on this show, so I'll keep my mouth shut. But you see that all the time. Yes, absolutely. Even today. Well, look at... Um, I'm not going to say. Mitt Romney. Or another one who ran for office. And Hillary Clinton. New York. Yes. They call them carpetbaggers. Mm -hmm. So I said, one Republican, run Democrat. Don't anybody get it up in a tizzy. <laughs> uh, in the 1800 election, Jefferson and Burr became running mates again. Uh, Burr aided the Democrat-Republican ticket by publishing a confidential document that Hamil had, Hamilton had written to criticize his fellow Federalist president, John Adams. So even within their own party, there was struggles. Just like today. Yep. Nothing new under the sun. This caused a rift in the Federalist and helped Jefferson and Burr win the election with 70, 73 electoral votes each. Now, it went deeper than that, uh, but I didn't quite understand it, so I didn't know how to explain it. No, I just know there was a deep hate between these two people. Because then there was some turn in the uh, Senate, and there was something about 35 votes and switch sides, and I, I don't know. I, I don't... It got ugly. It was ugly. Like, the thing is, is the, the press was slow to get the information out because that's how things were then. You didn't have the... 24 hour news cycle. Thankfully. So when someone when someone put something in a paper, it would take a while to filter out to the rest of the country. And by the time it got out there, it was inconsequential. Yeah. Uh later not getting supported for a second term in 1804, uh Burr. They they did uh Jefferson said, I'm not going to support you for a second term. Go away. Uh, in 1804, Hamilton waged another smear campaign against Burr uh, to sink his hopes to be New York governor from Weehawken, New Jersey, which caused Burr to step up and say, I challenge you to a duel. Um, now, I didn't see Hamilton. I didn't see the play. I haven't seen any recordings of it. I, I really don't know how the play went no. and there was a movie on it wasn't there i'm not sure a movie on everything. Uh, according to hamilton second his assistant and witness in the duel hamilton decided the duel the duel was wrong morally wrong and when they got there he deliberately fired above his head per head okay uh, Burr second said, no, 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 <laughs> he didn't do that. He just missed. So even there, they're going to argue about whatever. The duel took place in Weehawken, New Jersey. What? Is that where Burr's from? Weehawken, New Jersey? Yeah. On July... Right, peeps there. <laughs> July 11th, turf. 1804. And Burr was still vice president at the time. What happened next was agreed upon by all. Okay. Burr shot Hamilton in his stomach and the bullet lodged next to his spine. Hamilton was taken back to New York and he died the next afternoon. Uh, few affairs of honor actually resulted in deaths at this time. Uh, even with our, our, our last example, there was no death. No. They both got a scratch. They both felt satisfied. Move on. It was a cat fight. Uh, the nation was outraged by the killing of a man as imminent as Alexander Hamilton. You can imagine. Burr was charged with murder, but he was still vice president. He returned to Washington, D.C., where he finished out his term immune from prosecution. I don't know how anybody in the world should be immune from a murder prosecution. But it's something they still fight about today when presidents or people in public office are accused of things. It's still a privilege that they have today. That's wrong. But as we also can see today that the 
a justice system can be weaponized against absolutely just like political the press. leaders yeah and the, and the press absolutely because it, it has been always yes it's nothing new uh hamilton's party the federalist was weakened by hamilton's death and eventually went under because of it mm -hmm. uh now <laughs> this goes on uh burr went down with some general down in New Orleans to quell a uh, armed colonist uprising in Louisiana. And while he was down there, I don't know what happened, but uh, the general accused him of treason and wrote a letter to the president saying, hey, the motherfucker's a treasonist. And uh, he was tried and eventually acquitted on a technicality. I don't know. I didn't dig deep into this trial. I was focused more on the duel, the duel itself. But, um, yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean, he may have been acquitted, but he lost his honor anyway. It didn't end well for either man. No, no, it didn't. So, this one I did forget. I just looked. I did forget to put it on. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. And I don't know who he dueled because I didn't write it down. And that's how I remember shit. But, uh, and I don't know why. So is, this is like Johnny telling me about a movie. I don't know the name of the movie. I don't know who's in it, but you'd really like it. I'm not going to ask you any questions about it. So go ahead. So they got to the duel and Abraham Lincoln was so much taller and strong. He was, he wrestled constantly. He, he loved the wrestle. And kill vampires. So when he got, he, he chose broadswords as the weapon. And when they got there, uh, when they were standing nose to nose, he took his broadsword and swiped at a tree over top of the dude's head and cut a tree branch off. Now, broadswords aren't sharp instruments. No, but they're heavy. They're blunt and heavy. So the amount of force that had to go through to cut off a branch, even a small one, would be a lot. And broadswords are two-handed. Yes, and he grabbed it with one hand and did it. So the other dude and his second said, I don't want to fight. <laughs> and they walked away. I don't know if there was an apology. I... I kicked myself in the ass for not looking that one up. But Abraham I was, Lincoln, he was a pretty badass, too. I was running short of time. Well, he killed all those vampires. Wow. Like, not many presidents can say that. No. So, while Bill Hitchcock and Dave Tut, Springfield, Missouri, July 21st, 1865. Now, is this because the burr was pistols? This is pistols as well? Or they were revolvers, probably. These were revolvers. Okay. Um, like when you when your second set up the duel, they they figure out what weapons you're gonna use. Most of the times in his, history, it was rapiers or daggers or pistols, flintlock pistols. Um here, um, but the truth about the old West is the staying in the street showdown was a very rare thing, which is what we think of when we think of the wild West. Right. It, Cause I find that shocking because every Hollywood movie I've ever seen has like 15 showdowns in a movie. And it's all over the internet. It must yeah. be true. Uh, most of these shootouts began as drunken brawls or spontaneous arguments, uh, ambushes and, Cowardly attacks, shooting someone in the back, were far more common than standing in the street and shooting at each other. Uh, so in the Old West, you had a lot of immigrants coming into the country. So the code dulo was brought into the country with the Irish immigrants uh, and it influenced an informal Western code of what constituted a legitimate and legal gun battle. Now, that's one thing they do get right in the movies when uh, there is some kind of shootout. Everybody saw he drawled on me. He drawled on me. 
he had a gun. He was going to shoot me. I had no choice. You know, so if there was imminent danger. Then okay. you could defend your wilds, like stand your ground. Yeah. So above all, the Western Code required that a man resort to his six gun only in defense of his honor or life. And only if his opponent is also armed. And that's why you see a big deal um, historically. Like um, we just watched something about Billy the Kid. Was he armed? Wasn't he armed? Did Pat Garrett lie about it? Because that was part of the code of honor. Uh, and like I said, most were ca- most of these shootouts were cowardice acts. Yeah. So while Bill was a skilled gunman, which we know, with a formidable reputation, and he was eking out a living as a professional gambler in, Spring- gambler in Springfield, he had some sort of quarrel with Dave Tut who was a former Confederate soldier. It's unclear what caused the dispute. Some people say it was over a card game, while others say it was they fought over a woman. Either way, it brought them to a duel. Uh, they agreed that they would show up at sunup in the town square. Each one would be on opposing sides at the town square. Um, When Toot was about 75 yards away, Hitchcock shouted, don't come any closer, Dave. Don't you do it. Uh, Tut nervously drew his revolver and fired a a shot that went wild, like nowhere near him. Hitchcock pulled out his revolver, remained calm, brought it up, took aim, and shot Tut dead with a bullet through the chest. Revolver in his left hand. Well, he was left-handed. Yep. He's like, he turned it sideways. I doubt he did that. He didn't have to stick it through a window. He turned it sideways and st- pow pow. <laughs> uh, having adhered to the code of the West, Hitchcock was acquitted of manslaughter charges. So eight years later, however, Hitchcock died in a fashion far more t- typical of the violence of the day. A young gunslinger shot him in the back of the head while he was playing cards. Legend says that the hand Hitchcock was holding at the time of his death was two pair. Black aces and black eights. Hence. Hence the dead man's hand. Forever known as the dead man's hand. Aces and eights. So I wanted something from America. I wanted something from... Uh, well, something topless, <laughs> <laughs> something with boobs, and uh, like men and women both did this. It was far less common for women to to have these duels. It was far more common for men. Well, that's because women are sneakier. When we're gonna fight, we do things different. Yeah, you probably drop poison pills in my drink. Well, we'll know shortly. Um, so that's duels. I'm sure there's many more uh, famous duels because I, I I found pages and pages and pages of duels when I was going through. This. Well, you didn't even mention Luke and Darth. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> or Darth Vader and uh, Obi Wan. There you go. Or Darth Sidious and Yoda. I mean, those are famous duels. Absolutely. But I I didn't want to get too deep in the weeds on it. And my time was short in, in researching this. But um that's that. That's well, it's interesting. And when you get into uh the sh- sh- what is it Chival- Chival- oh, I can't chivalry chivalric laws and uh, things that their rules and it's just very interesting well it's interesting how it's changed it started off as a way for to keep order with criminals and and such and then it became about honor and then it came it became about courage and then you come to America and like 
in some of the things that I looked up, they were saying, well, how uh, Americans were always shooting each other, blah, 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 blah. But it's not the case any more than it was no. in Europe. No, or I mean, you know, and then you even look at Roman times and the gladiators and what were all those tournaments? Yeah. I mean, it's human history. Nothing new under the sun. So we took on the history of duels and a few famous duels. Now you go take on the world. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to Deluxe Edition Network. Dot com. That's Deluxe Edition Network. Dot com. Hold on, stop. Welcome back to the shit show 2.0. Okay, boomer. Damn millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. You want to be my wife? Oh, this is going to go downhill real quick. 